Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. The country today is in some sort of turmoil. Kidnapping is the new booming business. Banditry and terrorism are on the rise. Fuel rises and they falls without the knowledge of those in power. Where do we even start from? Or where do we even go from here? So welcome to The Advocates on Plus TV Africa, where we discuss thought-provoking topics in an atmosphere of seriousness, thoughtfulness, and laughter. Here we call a spade as it is, and as always, there are no holds barred. Today, I'll be speaking about the scam that is in the ease of doing business in Nigeria. My good friend Kinsley Ezene here is advocating for a Nigeria where the young have a voice. We still the way to, and Raymond is elucidating on the difference between positional leadership and a functional leadership. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Nigeria's ease of doing business is just a scam. Now, truth is that Nigeria is perhaps the hardest place in the world to own and run a business. From multiple taxation by FIRS, LIRS, or whatever your state tax agency is called, to even being taxed to get your own tax clearance certificate. To the clear impossibility of getting loan from a bank to scale your business, you literally need friends in high places to help your ministry before you can get loans from the bank of industry. Should we talk about the fact that you can't rely on the powered companies that will be dancing disco with your electricity? And the fact that if PACN, or better still, NEPA brings the light, you have to take a vow of silence or else they will take their light back. That is even sickening. And if that wasn't bad enough, the government arbitrarily raises the price of fuel without notice. And the president, who doubles as the minister of petroleum, says... He is unaware of any price increase. May, well, maybe fuel price just got tired of being at 165 Naira and decided to climb to 212 Naira. Today, Paystack and Flutterwave were recently in the news for multi-million and billion dollar valuations. I am sure that FIRS will soon send them a congratulatory invoice. Maybe Paystack and Flutterwave will someday move to Ghana Canada, or even Mauritius to do this business from there. Our Grammy Award winners, um, Bonaboy and Whiskey. I hope you got a congratulatory message from the president. It is clear that our government only celebrates you when you succeed outside of Nigeria and don't need their help. If you are in the business of importation today, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a container to be cleared at their papa ports. What about the several policy somersaults concerning cryptocurrencies and FF, uh, NFTs? It's almost impossible to transport your goods on, on our roads without police extortions. And don't even ask me how the, 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 the real players in, that, the players in that real economy are surviving with all manners of levies, double charges from both federal, state and local government task force agents coupled with forceful ex uh, collections by touts who work for the same government agencies or politicians as it were. And mind you, these entrepreneurs are the ones driving the economy, the real economy at the bottom of the pyramid. That's, well, that's what happens when you, are, you, you have analog leaders who are out of touch with today's digital economy. The financial institutions, Unko, ah, which one is stamp duty? Did I use the post office to, uh, when, when I was making my transaction? 
why do they charge for account maintenance? Isn't my money being in your account enough to maintain my account? Look at this analogy. You bought shares 15 years ago at 50 kobo per share. Today, it is 83 kobo. After 15 years, the value, in fact, the value of your 50 kobo back then is even worth more than the value of your 83 kobo today. Is Nigeria not useless? Well, maybe it's better to be on the next flight to Canada to start life all over again. So tell those policymakers that their ease of doing business is not by speaking English. Examining the ease, explaining the ease of doing business um, to a businessman is like explaining what GDP is to the common man on the street. It just doesn't make sense. So I maintain that this concept of the ease of doing business in Nigeria is just, is just a scam. That was quite an interesting introduction. And yeah. I agree with you completely that the ease of doing business in Nigeria is just a scam. As, as a matter of fact, at some point, I started wondering if the Nigerian government just calls for an executive council meeting and then they sit and ask themselves, how do we make life difficult for Nigerian youths? Because you check government policies, you discover that almost every government policy is aimed at stifling entrepreneurship and making Nigeria harder for people who are coming up. True. And over the years, I've tried to make sense out of this act. And only one thing came to mind, okay? That the government is trying to weaponize poverty. Hmm. That is what came to mind. Because the only way they will continue to stay in power is if they weaponize poverty and illiteracy. That's where they will have a willing mass of young people who are available to be used as political stooges. Okay, so the government is doing this thing deliberately. The truth is that Nigeria can only be an incubation for greatness, right? Mm. But Nigeria cannot bet greatness. And that is why the dream of the average Nigerian youth now is to get a Canadian <laughs> visa or US visa. And when you look yeah. at it, you discover that if visas could rain yeah. like rain, <laughs> Nigeria would be empty. You know, we were discussing about that when we were coming about, you know, this whole issue about a lot of people trying to leave Nigeria. And I agree with what you are saying because... Um, these guys are exposed, right? So you can't say they don't know what to do. Yeah. Even the uh, average Nigerian who, who have had an opportunity to go to probably Togo or Benin Republic, which is just behind here, used to get back to the country with a completely change of mindset, like challenged to really put into work some of the things that they have seen. And here we see people who constantly have to get into those places. They have allies, they have friends, they, some of them live there, mm. and they can't replicate what the, is happening there. You know, what really, really gets me so sad about the nation called Nigeria is the fact that we are massively blessed with all kinds of things. I mean, look at Bonaboy and, uh, and Whiskey. And I love the line that where, where you talked about, it appears that our government are only interested in celebrating our own from outside. Yeah. You know, just yesterday, nobody was talking about Ngozi Okonjiwala. Today, she's like a god exactly. to everybody. Everybody is talking about her. Mm. Everybody is singing her praise just because she has really stretched herself to succeed outside. We see a lot of Nigerians who have to, you know, uh, even now we're seeing a lot of our medical doctors who can't even do their business here mm. because having passed through the process of, you know, perfecting whatever thing that they are doing here, there is no enabling environment. Some of them are passionate about giving these services. Mm. They don't have tools. They don't have instruments. The facilities are wasted. You go to do some of these hospitals, you are wondering who did we really, really offend that we are here with the kind of money that we have, uh, with the kind of resources we have, intellectual resources we have. We do not have any uh, disaster, no hurricane. Not any of these things happen in this country. You now begin to really wonder what is our problem. And when you talk about ease of doing business, I can tell you that these guys are doing this thing deliberately. And like Kinsley pointed out, weaponizing poverty, making sure that people are illiterate because you can't really you know, question what you don't know about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of the people who come out to question some actions are people who, who can compare. You can't compare yeah, one thing. You can only compare two mm. things. So yeah. you look at what A is, you know what B is, you mm. can now compare which one is better. So, so the only people who can compare 
are people that are exposed. And these men know that provided people continue to evolve, to know what is obtainable, they just want to keep them down. Cryptocurrencies show that. Yeah. Because now, there are a lot of young people who can no longer rush to politicians to wash their car, mm. to collect money to buy a bottle of beer. Yeah. So you can see how cryptocurrency is actually empowering a lot of young people. They are helping their families. Mm. They can pay their school fees. They can start up their businesses. And they no longer care about the kind of car a politician drives into yeah. their community with. Mm. So as a politician, immediately you are entering into the community, the young men are comfortable. They are going to school if they want to go to school. They are traveling abroad if they want to travel abroad. They are helping their families to take care of the uh, onions, bags mm. of onions, the yeah. maggi, the, the paper that you use to impoverish people. Their children are beginning to provide those things. So they are asking themselves, why is it that when we get back to our communities, mm. these young people are no longer rushing to us to buy them drinks just like they used to do. And they discover that wow, they are beginning to find alternatives. Yeah. And that's what cryptocurrency is bringing. And the next thing is that they now want to say, we need to mm -hmm. go and find out how what? do we take hold of this? How do we regulate it? You know, when you hear these people talk, you begin to really wonder, is it like they don't treat about global trends? This yeah. is where the entire world is going. And how is it that it's just a group of people in, in Nigeria that are suddenly saying that uh, Bitcoin came from the tin air? When this is something that is making people billionaires, when the richest man in the world at some point invested 1.5 billion yeah. in something that somebody in, most, in one chamber yeah. in Nigeria is saying it came from tin air, it's really, really very sad. You know, I I find <laughs> I find it interesting sometimes um, thinking about Nigeria. It's it's um, it's 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 a world right um sometimes i ask myself where like you rightly said mm. who did we offend the you know sometimes i date back to our independence no 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 to the slavery you know people argue that oh it's not um many nations people everybody they are, nigeria is not the only nation that was enslaved uh, but i don't know you know maybe we have not taken our time to to deal with the psychological, the transference of the psychological um, decadence or psychological negative impact of that thing on us. Because a slave does not own anything. And if you look at it, really, we still behave like, like that. A slave believes that the master has to give him everything. And mm. look at it. Um, our government, from the federal, state, and local government, is running on rent, rent collection uh, 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 model. So we wait for federal allocation and we ignore all the resources within us. So you see the Nigerian government, they are with the, how we embrace what, what is coming out, but we don't mind what is within. You said Bonner boy. I mean, but if you know the price that guy paid to get there, the question is how many people can be as lucky as Lubona boy. There's the hard work. There's the hard work he put in there. So I'm not I'm yeah. not um, talking yeah. down on that. There's the hard work he yeah. put in there. But imagine that you made it easy for every other young person. I mean, you, you know, know when you talk about ease of doing business, uh, and that reminds me of uh, Dubai, the nation mm. of the UAE. One of the things they are doing right now, and, and that's why you can find a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business owners are beginning to, like they're beginning to, I would say they, have, they are now pouring into that nation. You know what they are doing right now? They First of all, they've opened up their borders. They've opened up their borders. They say, we really want you to get into mm -hmm. our space. Nigerian system is such that nobody wants to get into this space. Because you get into this space, you get swallowed up. You get into this space. Now, one of the things that business owners in Nigeria do, nobody wants to put out their Nobody wants to put out their, 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 their billboard and all those stuff because mm. immediately you put out your billboard, you have that same day, you have 20 agencies Coming that are to... going to bombard you and give you list of taxes, list of all kinds of things yeah. that you have to pay. But you get to these nations, they open it up, they just tell you this is what it requires. Yeah. And once you pay it, they provide you with everything. In Dubai, with as little as I think $6,000, $5,000, $6,000, they you just register a business with them. They give you an office. They give you everything. They give you internet. They say, come and live with us. Now, they are now from, from what they call residency program. Mm. So they don't even want you to be in your country again. Come yeah. and live here. In fact, beyond residency, they also have the one they, the one they, 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 they're planning to now get people to nationalize mm. you know, in the place. So mm. I really think that 
it's a, it's a scam, really. Yeah, if they say okay. ease of doing business. I, I, agree, I agree with you. Okay, I agree with you. I think the problem in Nigeria is that our leaders fetishize foreign validation, right? Mm. When you're coming from outside Nigeria or you're a foreigner, they give you every attention and give you every necessary thing. And it boils down to what Peter said earlier, it's slavery mentality. We don't appreciate our own, but we celebrate foreign people and foreign investments. All right, we are, we, are, we are going on a break now. After this break, Kingsley is next as he, he dreams of a Nigeria where the youth can have a voice of their own. Stay with us. We'll be right back.